All right, so how many of us have ever worked out and we look down at our watches and we realize that, man, that was a very tough workout, but why is it saying that I didn't burn as much calories as I felt like I did? Or how many of us look at our watch, then go over to our friend and look at their watch and say, how the heck did you burn 280 calories when I only burnt 120 calories? Well, today I'm going to show you or explain to you the differences and how you can not only burn more calories, but why each person is burning calories differently. So starting with the three prong, there's three main reasons why somebody's either burning more or less calories than the other person. Number one is body size, two is shape, and three is muscle mass. So let's start with your weights. Now, everybody is created differently. So if you're looking at your friend that you're working out with, and let's say that you are, and I'm not trying to put anybody's weight or height or whatever, let's say you are five foot four and you weigh 135 pounds. And then you're looking at a male that is six foot three, 250 pounds. And you're wondering why is this guy burning more calories than me when I clearly worked out harder than him? Well, if you look at these ladies carrying those cylinder blocks and the more cylinder blocks that these ladies are carrying on their head, don't you think that they're gonna be burning more calories, right? They're all in and around the same body weight, right? They're all around the same height, same gender, but the more weight that they have on them, the more that their body has to work harder and as such, the more calories that they're going to be burning. And so there's many factors. Weight is one of the biggest ones. Somebody that is obese, they've actually done research on a, a group of obese individuals and their metabolism is actually higher than a fit person's metabolism that is half their size. Now, the reason being is because of all that weight that somebody's carrying around, their body is having to work extra hard just to be able to move their bodies and do daily functioning as it would for, for somebody else. And so somebody that is bigger than you, somebody that is heavier than you, that's all going to be one of the main factors as to why they're burning more calories. So it's impossible for you to compare yourself at 150, five foot four to somebody that is five foot eight, that is 180. You can't make those comparisons. You can only make your comparisons to yourself or somebody that's got the similar stature. Number two is level of conditioning. I don't know where the image is, but there was a nice sexy image here. But the level of conditioning. Now, the, the, the more out of shape. So let's go back to your day one, right? And you went back to your day one and you remember how hard that workout was. And you remember if you had a watch back, then you were monitoring how many calories you were burning. And when you first started working out, if you're able to work out at a 10 of a 10, right? So you probably weren't able to work out at that high intensity. But once you got to that 10 out of 10, you saw that you were burning the most amount of calories on the front end, right? You'll notice that when you take time off from working out, let's say you go on a seven day trip where your activity levels are low, then you're going to find that your, you, when you come back, that your caloric burn is a lot higher. And the reason being is your heart is a muscle, okay? And your heart, these watches only monitor heart rate. They're not monitoring your muscle mass. They're not monitoring your exertion. They're not monitoring the style of training that you're doing. They're only monitoring heart rate. So the better in shape you get, the less your heart has to work, and then the less caloric burn, according to your watch, is required. And so the better in shape you get, the less your heart has to work. And in fact, you don't want your heart rate working that hard, right? My average heart resting heart rate is in between 40 and 45. So that means that according to my watch, my daily caloric burn is gonna be so low, right? Because why? My heart rate isn't beating at 120, 120, 120. And anybody that's in the health field knows that your heart can't be up here, up here, up here all the time. What do they do with people that are, where their heart rates are elevated for longer periods of times? They sedate them. Because why? Your metabolism can't take it for that long. Two, your heart is a muscle and eventually it's just going to blow up and explode. And number three, it's just not healthy. And so the better in shape you get, the less energy output you're going to be required. 
and and then it's going to just reflect that but it doesn't mean that you're not getting any of the, the gains in muscle gains in dropping body fat or, or gains in conditioning it just means that hey my heart just doesn't need to work out work that hard and then number three is muscle mass and so if you compare a female at five foot six 140 pounds to a male of five foot six 140 pounds it doesn't matter it matters by how much muscle you have and so as you put on more muscle you're going to find that your calories are going to be burning but these heart rates aren't linked into your bloodstream they're not linked into your muscle fibers they're only linked onto a pulse right and so the more muscle mass you have and when you use the scale that's going to be your determining factor so if you put two exact twins identical twins side by side and you had one one was 20 percent muscle and the other was 30 percent muscle well you got to remember this the person has with 20 percent muscle has more body fat and it only takes three calories to keep one pound of body fat alive Whereas when you have muscle, it takes 30 calories to keep one pound of muscle alive. And that's just muscle resting. Muscle requires more calories when it's working because it's stronger, it's able to do more, and it contracts harder and faster. And so the more muscle mass that you have on, the more calories you're burning not only at rest, but also in the workout. And so somebody like me, where I'm like 45% muscle, then my heart rate so that workout that we just did i only burnt like 250 calories right and you're like rj how but it's like yeah i worked out in front i was on the, the i say when you put that mic on you burn like the, the exertion's way higher because you got to look like you're not tired right and so my caloric burn is low according to my watch so should i be sad and depressed and think that i didn't do a hard workout i almost passed out do you know what i mean like that's how hard i worked out today but my muscle is exerting more energy. I'm burning more calories because I have more muscle. And as such, I require more calories. Or I might stand next to somebody else and say, man, you burnt 400 and I only burnt 200. And I'm like, oh, I didn't work out as hard. Cause like, I know I worked out as hard, but now I got more muscle. So I'm burning more calories. And so you have to take that into the equation, right? So as your muscle mass goes up, then the amount of calories that you require just to keep that muscle alive goes up. And so, the watch is not accounting for that. So that's one of the other things. So here's a chart, and I'm gonna put these slides into the FitFam so you guys can kind of work through this together. But this is where I'm gonna open it up. So one of, one of the ways that we can burn more calories is if we move more, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna open this up to you guys. So um, one way that we can move more, and I'm just gonna put this in here is to, and I'm gonna ask you guys for one each, okay? Uh, you're gonna do the stairs versus elevator, okay? Who's got one for me? Kathy, unmute yourself. Um, keep moving in between um, the exercises on the blue. Move between exercises. Zena, are you ready? She might be frozen. Greg. All right, we don't have anybody. All right, Kathy, let's work through these together. So we got stairs versus the elevator. Move between exercises. What I would tell somebody is to get 10,000 steps a day. Also, every 20 minutes on the computer, you do a, a, a two minute walk. So whether that be around your office, whether that be around your house, whatever it is, that's what we want. So Greg put walk more. So there we go, we nailed it. All right, so here's a tough one and let's see if we can get this one together. So how do we get more muscle? So number one is that you need to feed, feed the machine. Okay. What I mean by feed the machine is that if you're in too low of a caloric deficit, and I know that we have this stigma, and I think that most people working in this group have gotten over that stigma, that more less calories equals better weight loss. And that's the total opposite because we just said that muscle burns more calories than fat. And so the more muscle you have, the more caloric requirement that you have. And so the way that you're going to the way that you're going to find that out is number one, you got to get yourself a smartwatch and it can't be a knockoff watch from wish, 
My recommendation is that it's got to be a Fitbit. It's got to be a Garmin. Garmin is number one for the watches. They've been around the longest. I know they're not as sexy as the Apple Watch, but I just feel like those are meant for your phone, not meant to track your calories. So my recommendation is always to go to a Garmin. So you need to track how many calories you're burning a day. You need to track how many calories you're consuming. And then if your goal is weight loss, then don't put yourself in such a heavy deficit. Number two is that when you're lifting, you want to you want to do anywhere from a minimum of 10 to a max of about 15 reps okay and that's about two reps like two reps every second right and so you should be able, or one rep every two seconds sorry and so when you're lifting your weights you want to be able to challenge yourself to the point where at the end of that 30 seconds you're finishing in and around 10 but you're not struggling and wasting time where you don't get 10 anything above 15 now you're looking into more of the endurance muscles and so those are still muscles because you're still challenging yourself. But if you really want to try and put on some muscle, then my recommendation is to go 10 to 15 reps. The third one is try to consume protein for every pound. So one gram of protein for every pound of body weight. And then number three is that active rest. Okay. And I know that we all want to work out every single day. We want to like make the workouts harder. We want to keep chalking our body. But if you're always constantly in a, in a building and you're constantly in a, like when you work out, there's, there's a lot of processes. It's like, it's like small damage to your muscle. You got to do an active rest. I'm not saying take a complete day off, but do like a stretching routine, do a walk, do some type of movement once a week flushing your body out versus tearing your body down because that's basically what we're doing sore equals sexy but you want to like take a day where you you're just allowing everything to kind of recover now we're talking about melt so when we're talking about melt we're talking about changing we're talking about manipulating your metabolism okay and so there's ways that we can manipulate that metabolism one of the ways is to uh, is leaner right so leaner is a supplement that we take and honestly like outside of taking it on like not taking it on a Sunday I recommend everybody to get on a sample of leaner because it's gonna boost your metabolism naturally it's got a lot of ingredients in there that are 100% natural such as cayenne pepper that raise your metabolism and so you can take this almost every day and I would just periodize so on an average day it would be about four on a high day, you go up to about six or eight, right? And then, and then on your off days, you just take none, okay? Another one is the ephedrine, right? So ephedrine is the, one of the supplements that we have here, and it actually works with your, your beta and your alpha cells, primarily your alpha cells. And so what it does, it stimulates certain cells to utilize more energy, and it also focuses on burning fat as fuel. Now, one of the rec one of the things that happens with people is because this works so well is that they get they get a feeling of overwhelming. And so, my my recommendation for you is that if you're taking on your first time, don't take it before you work out, where your heart rate's going to be shooting up anyways, because it's going to make your heart rate it's going to demand more of you, and so it's going to make you feel anxious. It's going to make you feel a little bit overwhelmed. But if you take it with a meal, kind of like build it into your system. And, and then eventually it'll help with your metabolism. And then you can start to take it as a pre-workout. But I don't, I recommend no more than three. I personally go up to five some days if I'm really trying to shred. But again, you want to cycle this once a week where you take a complete day off. Spicy food, right, is another one, right? We have these ghost peppers that I've been just like gnawing at. <laughs> right away, I just start sweating, right? Well, that's a way for you to metabolism up right start using spicy sauces right such as uh franks is the best right franks or even sriracha right if i spelled that right so like start using using your metabolism start using different food hacks to just slowly build your metabolism and then lastly is just is just doing more so giving more giving more energy output put at uh in workouts right that's that's a big one and um and uh you know doing doing like the two days so we're offering the virtuals and the in-person right two a days but primarily just focus on keep giving it your all for one and done right so i always say give me give me an 11 out of 10 
right? 11 out of 10. So that means that you got to get there early, get to the sessions early so that you can get a warm up in, even if you do one yourself, right? This way, when you do your warm up, when you do your warm up, you, your body is revved and ready to go versus wasting that first set as a warm up set, right? And a lot of people do that where they kind of come in late and then they're trying to go, but you know, obviously your body doesn't want to go because it's cold, right? Like wherever you're coming from, think about you trying to drive out of your garage, right? And then all of a sudden you're trying to pin your car and you haven't even warmed it up. The same thing happens with your body. So get a solid warm up. This way you can start that first set and keep your reps to that 10 to 15. So what are my recommendations to you? Number one is don't compare yourself to other people. And this is one of the reasons why we don't put everybody's heart rate up on a screen is because people's heart demands are gonna be so, such a wide variety. So when you're trying to compete with somebody based around heart rate, it's gonna be virtually impossible because you can be looking at all those different variables of that person, but you're just looking at one number, right? It's like comparing how much weight you lose. So let's say you're 150 and the other person's 240. The person that's 240 lost 20 pounds in six weeks and you lost 10 pounds and you're like, man, how did that person lose 20 pounds? Now like, I feel like a failure. Well, it's like, well, that person's got a lot more weight to lose than you, right? So it's the same thing with, with the heart rates and how many calories you're burning is don't compare yourself to other people. There's just so many different variables. Number two is that you got to trust the process, right? Doing one workout isn't going to get you the results that you're looking for. You have to do it for a long, extensive period of time. And 12 months is not long enough to do the program, especially if you spent the last 10 years doing something not even closely comparable to it. So I would say that the people that have the best results here, and you'll see them, they're the ones that have started with us back, back in the NLT days. They've been with us for three years, right? And they, they've let their muscle mature their metabolism is high because they've been coming straight for three years before they went and tried something different. So you've got to trust the process for a longer term. And number three is the challenges, right? So like take on some of these challenges that we're putting out there, right? Because this is how we're going to be able to change and challenge you through your nutrition and also through your physical abilities. And so that's, that's the number three. Let me hit 